Hey hello viewers, welcome to our channel Career Advice. So today we are going to delve into the world of resumes. So if you let me know what is in the comment section what delve means. So hey hello viewers, welcome to our channel Career Advice. So today we are going to delve into the world of resumes. So if you let me know what is in the comment section what delve means. So, so today we are exploring a bit of captivating topic that will help you to understand between what's a good resume and what is a worst resume in the sense what is the best resume and what's a worst resume and how you can use the techniques to, to, to distinguish yourself among the number of applicants, among the number of competitors that you are facing through when you are applying for a job. So how you can distinguish yourself how you can you know make an edge in your application in your resume form in your job application whether you are a fresher or you are experience holder or I think <laughs> okay so if you are a fresher or if you are an experience holder or if you are just an enthusiast this video is exactly for you to know the difference between a best resume and a worst resume okay so okay let's go what is a resume and what is a CV? So, you know, resume are of two types. One is for freshers and one is for experienced people. So for experienced people, resume and CV both are same. There is not much difference between a curriculum vita and a resume. But for a foreign freshers point of view, it has a little bit of difference. So a freshers resume should look like this, a detailing part in, within one page or maximum two pages like about yourself, your photo and address, education, skills that you have, you have Java, Core Java, J2E, you have AI, blockchain, whatever you have learned, if you, whether you have any certification or not, whether you, and any projects that you have done, excellent project or exciting project that you have done in your colleges, and you have any interest so far, if you have got some, some awards, accolades for, for a project, you have gone through some competition, and exciting part is if you how many languages you know languages not in the terms of uh, technical languages rather communication language so if you know two to three uh, languages so apart from your mother tongue that will take an extra advantage for yourself okay so it should not be more than one page be i'm repeating it again and again if it is more than one page the more chances of uh, the evaluator getting bored of your resume and you are you are showcasing or you you are projecting yourself more than what the evaluator know okay so that bit of ego issue comes through from between evaluator and yourself so make sure that your resume is just one page detailing about your career so far because you haven't started anything right in in terms of corporates or you haven't done anything you just have to serve. so it should be only one page okay now moving to our second point how a experience holders resume should look like so a experience holders resume should not be, I'm emphasizing the point, it should not be only one page. It should be having a detailed explanation, a detailed description what the experienced person has do, what the person has so far done in his or her career. Whether you are having two years experience, three years experience, four years or five years or whatever experience. Like I said before, a resume and a curriculum by date doesn't have much difference for, for an experienced person. Okay, so how the format of an experienced person's resume or curriculum vitae should look like? Whether it is should be one page? No. If you are making only one page resume or two page resume, if you are, uh, and you are having an experience, the chances of getting rejected or the chances of getting not selected via the selectors during the interview process or during the selection process prior to that is very very high. Okay, and even if the selectors get selected select the resume something like this one page or two page when it goes to the evaluator or to the technical panel they will straightforwardly reject it it is my uh, experience through i'm talking about because that's how i do most of the time okay because it doesn't give much more detail about the candidate so far so then how it should look like well it should be well descriptive like i said for example on the header of the resume should be like i'm sharing my screen the header of the resume should be looking like uh, a the the header your name description uh, sorry the header your name and the full phone and address for the communication and the objective that you have 
uh, to achieve a detailed summary about so far of your career a highlighting like how if you have done automation if you are experiencing to so many skills like sap c++ c java ai or if you are experiencing multiple modules of ai multiple modules of blockchain and you have done so many greenfield projects or if you have done brownfield projects so a, a detailed summary then a, the primary skill primary skills means whatever you know so far ai blockchain integrating ai with cyber security sap uh, for sap consultants what all modules you know so any and anything like you know ticketing tool defect tracking tool your qualifications so far your graduate undergraduate masters etc achievements this is very important achievements what you have in your professional careers if you have multiple achievements do detail that in your resume and the evaluator might ask you evidence or just just a one liner over here only mentioning achievement will not help much okay you should have evidence or backing to show you the to show the proof to the evaluator okay now the second important point is the project overview what all projects you have done so far like in the in the experiences like two year three year experience you have first project in one company for a customer and within that project what what the thing that technically you have done what was your responsibility what was about your project technically what you have done a, a not very detailed but a uh, a a explanation which will be eye catching which will attract the evaluator to evaluate you better okay so that that in to my knowledge that carries much more weightage for any kind of experience person the number of projects you have done just write it down not the gunchi gunchi ones not the smaller ones or the chutu putu ones so but the projects that you have done really good work it has a very good value for example you have done a migration project from a legacy system to new new system like sap for example sap is you consultant so some you have migrated the migrated these systems of the customer from the legacy system which it is to new sap is you s4 systems okay if you have done some kind of migration you detail about it what you have done in the, within that project whatever the technical documentation architect you have done if you write in detail the chance is that first point you know detail about the project in and out so you know all the keywords of that project like migration sap is you billing documents billing uh, billing setup uh, and the pricing setup etc so if you will write down like this that we have done so far so when the selector will search in the job portal machine so your resume will get popped up in number one the first or second because you have done so many things and you your keywords will match with the selector's keyword and from where the selectors get those keywords they get it from the evaluator the technical evaluator who has already done that and they will give you you search or you you filter out the resumes like this the job portal so this way your job carries your resume carries an added advantage if you have portrayed your resume in a project wise so what all project you have done in which company and how many years you have associated with and how many projects you have done within that company so that carries much more weightage okay if you haven't done anything okay and you just do an outsider service and just get got your resume done by third party service you might get selected by the selector but in this case there is a trap here because when it goes to the evaluator the evaluator straight forward rejects such kind of candidates because they will ask you point by point whatever you have written they will ask you in detail about that because your resume represents yourself right you are representing yourself by your resume what you have done and the, if you have done any if you have written the Uh, the points that you haven't done and you don't have experience that means straight forward it's a fake thing so more more than 100% chances that you will get rejected so please avoid such kind of services it doesn't really help people rather you if you don't know about the subject if you don't know about the sap iso you can watch our video and practice it or uh, or you can uh, you can take an uh, or or you can uh, take an uh, training and do the project within that training get the idea about that then you write down your so that you can defend yourself whatever you have written in your resume so so this is how 
you should be portraying your resume you should be writing your resume because you remember resume is the one representing yourself in front of the evaluator and that's how you will get an interview call and you might have get an interview call if you have good resume to three to four companies whatever you like for sap sap labs deloitte big four pwc all these uh, uh, no big brands big names so you should be writing about resume like this and this comes to the end of our topic and do let me know what, how you like this content and shall we put more such content like this from our real time experience that will help you through whether you are a fresher or you are a uh, experienced holder or you are a curious person okay so till then wait for our next video then and do comment in our comment section and like share subscribe to our channel please do like subscribe thank you